Alright guys, we got a big one today because we're going to be taking an ordinary kitchen and transforming it with a rustic renovation. But this project didn't go the way we wanted it to in any way, shape or form. And so we're actually going to be showing you all of the things that we did right and then some of the things that we did wrong. Actually not some of them, all of them. Because if you guys are going to start to tackle a project like this, I want to make sure that you're well prepared for what lies ahead. Now before we dive too deep into today's video series, I'm going to tell you straight up, we screwed up a lot on this thing. And yet, it still turned out absolutely gorgeous. And I know some of you guys are going to say, well why should we watch you? You made so many mistakes. Well, here's my answer to you, don't. I don't care if you do or if you don't. But for the people that want to duplicate what we did, but don't want to duplicate the problems, well then maybe those guys this video is meant for or something like that. Because we're gonna show you absolutely everything good, bad, and in between that happened to us on this project. Including where we purchased materials, what we did right, what we did wrong, and would never do again. And hopefully if you guys are gonna go out and try to tackle something like this on your own, you can just learn from us. So, here we go. Okay guys, here's one of the problems you have when you use a heat gun versus a torch. Well, our second coat's not going quite right because our chemicals are, looks like it's gonna spontaneously combust. That's 235 degrees. The very first thing you need to do before starting any project like this is to get your wood from the right source. I've heard horror stories of guys trying to order live edge wood and getting it cracked, broken to the wrong dimensions and just not working. I picked my pieces up from Minnesota Milling. They've got a fabulous website, but for me, luckily, they're located right in Farmington, Minnesota. So I went to their yard and was able to hand select the wood I needed for my project. And I found a large assortment of not only awesome wood, but some cool pieces that I would have never seen if I hadn't actually gone out there. So if you guys are looking to source your wood, I'm going to tell you straight up. Minnesota Milling, I've had multiple good experiences with them. Go to their website, check them out. With full confidence, I can recommend them. That's your first step. Get the right wood and that gets you off to the right start. You get the log perfectly level? Yeah, so we want the center of the log to be at the same point so all the grain is nice and straight. That one timber is like almost as big as you are, Frankie. Yeah. I mean, just the, the thickness of it. What kind of wood is that, Alex? Uh, those are red oak there. Those are red oak? Yeah. So you've got a whole shed full. Is that, is that your cut pieces right there? But yeah. You, you got them all stacked up all over out here. You got trees everywhere I look. Hey guys, here's something I want to point out. When you're picking out the wood for your specific project, you don't just think about the species that you want, but you actually want to have the individual piece of wood. Because every piece of wood has its own character, and that's really what's going to make or break your project. So be particular at this stage. Make sure you get the right piece of wood for your project. Now this piece of wood here is over 17 feet long and three and a half inches thick. This is where I show customers all my finished product. Um, you know, typically the wood I sell 
looks really gray and rough like this, so I always sand it, or I, you know, show people it's real easy to just sand it, poly it. It really doesn't take much. So book match, show me book match. Yeah, so this piece here is book match. It's where you take two slabs that come from on top of each other when you cut the tree. Um, you can flip them end to end, which is what I think we're gonna do with your project. Um, here we did them side to side, but there's a seam down the center here, which you really can't see, and then all these knots will match up perfectly. Oh, so that's how you get it wider. So if you don't have the width, you can you flip them side to side to get yep. your width. Tucker! You got something to say? Huh? <laughs> he does. You got something to say? What? What? You think this is a good idea? Yeah, these are just the same thing, just both match them end to end instead of, you know, side to side. Okay, what kind of wood is this now? And those are white oak. White oak? What do we got right here? This is ash. Ash, okay. Um, and what do we got against the wall? Uh, those back here, these are white oak too. Got some cherry here. Uh, some more black walnut. So this is black walnut, this is black walnut. What is this? This is not black walnut, is it? It is black walnut. It just has a different finish on it. That's why the color looks a little bit different. So you actually, this is just a, just gloss, clear gloss on these two pieces right here, right? Yeah, so all I did was take the raw wood, um, sand it down, um, and put a couple coats of polyurethane on it. All right guys, you know what? It's just gonna be easier for me to show you what I'm talking about when I say be careful about the species you select because this is black walnut here and it has zero processing done on it except for a coat of poly put over the top of it. And what you see behind me is maple and we had to work the heck out of it to achieve this look. In fact, this maple countertop has two coats of red oak stain and then three coats of poly over the top of that to achieve this look. So whatever species you start off with is pretty important because it's going to impact the way that it ultimately look, looks and how much work you have to do to achieve that look. All right, so for the record, Frankie doesn't think battery is gonna cut this three inch wet, what is this, maple? Maple, yeah. All right, so we got the Makita worm drive and it's battery. We're gonna see if it'll do it. You know what's more important than will this saw make the cut is how do you actually make the cut? Because remember now, you've got a live edge that w moves in and out and you've got a perfectly straight wall that you've got to match up to. So the most important thing to remember when you're attempting to snap your back chalk line is to take the most inward measurement of your live edge and measure back the distance that you need to your wall. The reason I say this is because when you actually cut that back edge that's going to butt up against the wall, the front of your countertop, some of it's going to come out more, some of it's going to go in, but you never want it to go so far in that it exposes your cabinet fronts. So make sure that you take the skinniest part of your live edge as it works its way in and measure that back to the wall. Now Frankie's tapping wedges in to help keep the cut open as he makes the cut. That keeps the saw from binding up. But she's not binding up. No, actually, it, it, it impresses me. I didn't think you'd make it this far. Yeah, the other saw you used bound up twice before it got two feet. You used it before it got 10 inches. I'd call this the devil's cut. <laughs> Maybe that's being dramatic, but this is about as hard of a cut as you could make, isn't it? Well, it was, yeah, because it was wet and yeah. Now this excess material doesn't go to waste because we're actually going to be converting that into the backstop that goes up against the back wall of the countertop. Yeah. Where's our test piece? Oh, right here. Okay, so here's our different... Can you, can you lay it? There we go. Okay. See, this is the rough edge. Okay, so that's how it would lay. Let me focus in on this is a little tough to see so there's sanded live edge there's wire wheeled live edge and then we also did the other side without any live edge right yep so that's the and that's three inch thick material so you guys let me know down below in the comments what's your vote do you vote for sanded live edge wire wheeled live edge or no live edge all right Good to know.
I want to hear from you guys. Which one do you like, Frankie? I, I like the, the straight cut. You like the straight cut? Yeah. Because? Just because you can see the grain. Grain. I think that'll look nice once we put the, that clear coat on there. Well, we'll know more once we give it, because we're going to give the whole thing a test, yep. test coat. Alright, so Frankie, what are you up to right now? You're just cleaning this up. Just cleaning this up so you're knocking the gray off. The gray, yep. The and gray off and then he kinda like where the where the forklift or something might have hit it. You know, the, the damage. Kinda just kind of fixing it, making it look right. Okay. The bandsaw marks out of it. I'm just using a heavy coarse paper and uh sandpaper and just cut it down until you get it all salt marks out of it. And then do the final sandings, thinner, finer. Paper. So you're using a belt sander for the top one, right? Yeah. Okay, because that's your that's our heaviest duty one. Yeah. And then what's the what you what's your plan with the sanders after that? These are the orbital and then uh, the vibrator. And because so as this wood comes inside and dries, this has already been dried for a year outside. So we need to make sure that people understand this. You can't just cut it and then use it right away. It literally has to dry for about a year. And then you should actually put a moisture reader onto the wood to know where the moisture's at. Now this has already all been done, but we still anticipate more moisture coming out of the wood because once it's inside and warm year round, it tends to do the final drying, right? Yeah. But what I was just gonna also tell these guys is look at the pattern. Like this is maple and this is not my first choice of wood. I just, not a big fan of maple until I seen this pattern in it. I've never personally seen maple with this crazy <laughs> of a pattern in it. What about you, Frankie? Yeah, it's nice, it's nice. It's gonna look really nice once you put that uh, clear on there. Or gloss, you know. And the way to, to see what it'll look like with the gloss is to simply wet it down a little bit. Right. Well, we'll, we'll sample everything. We'll try everything on a little piece. But I'm saying if these guys don't don't have a piece that they can sample oh. it on. Yeah, just get it wet, more or less. Just get it wet, and that'll help you. I mean, it won't, it won't help you with staining options, guys. But it will help you with if you're just going to clear coat it. That's kind of similar, isn't it? Yeah. We're going to rotate the piece over so we can mark the bottom so we know exactly where our overhang is going to be in relation to our countertops. All right, Frankie, I want to talk about, before you make this cut, I want to talk about your chalk lines. Yeah. Because you got a live edge slab on both sides. And you oh. got a, a, a wall that's a straight wall, so right. you, we had to cut the live edge off from one side. Oh, right, yeah. And that makes it a little bit tricky. So can you walk us through how you did that to determine to get the right amount of overhang? I went to my, my narrowest points and, and come back an inch and a half. It's wide here, but I mean, I went to my narrow point here, come back inch and a half, snap my line, that'll be my overhang. So this cover. is your live edge overhang. This stays, this side stays on. Yeah. Okay. And I just measured back from that line the, the width I wanted my um, cone top. Okay, so just to be clear guys, this line is not where he's cutting. This is just to create the straight edge so that when he cuts back to the wall, which this is the side that gets cut, he's got a true straight edge, right? Yep. Okay, all right, let's see it, Frankie. Frankie thinks it'll do it. No, it won't. 
it won't do it because blade on backwards. He, he put the blade on backwards. <laughs> so Frankie's actually got his on bass backwards on the other one. You can see that's the right way. And this is the wrong way. It'll still cut. You just push a heck of a lot harder. So if you guys ever notice, this isn't going the way I want it to. Maybe get your blade on bass backwards. There you go. And it's easy to do because they got writing on both sides. Yeah, normally they just got the writing on the one side. Right. That's see, writing and writing. Don't put your underwear on backwards and don't put your saw blade on backwards. That's a Dirt Monkey hot tip for you. Okay, so I, something I want to point out is that piece you just cut off right there, Frankie, yeah. is not waste. That's actually going to be turned into the backsplash. We now have the countertop cut to the right width, and now we rotate it. Well, yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, I want to sand them. I'll sand the bottom first, and then the so, back bottom corner, then I'll we'll flip it. So you're going to sand the bottom? The bottom corner. You know, just... Yeah, so this to take the rough edges off. You don't have to do it. I like to do it just to take the rough edges off. So there ain't no slivers. Which bottom corner are you talking about? Ready. Slivers when well, we're when installing we're it? it? When we're carrying it. I'll just okay, round it, okay, okay. It. okay, good. All right. Well, then that makes sense because I was thinking, where are you going to? Nobody's going to crawl under because that's the bottom corner inside most of the. Nobody's going to crawl underneath there and be going, salad fingers, salad fingers. If you haven't seen that video, don't, don't. What's that one? Salad fingers. It is the weirdest video somebody ever showed me. Oh, speaking of weird videos, they showed me that because I actually kind of like weird videos. So tell me your favorite weird video. Mine is... Charlie the Unicorn, and I think I actually kind of like Salad Fingers, but I want to hear from you, what is yours? Okay, so here's our test piece. We've got three different stains on it, and there's a couple things that we learned during this process. I'm glad we did this test piece for sure before we went with the main piece, right? Yep. First thing that we both seen on this test piece is the bandsaw marks. Even though this is sanded out, you can still clearly see them. Look it. Yeah, all, oh, oh, that's dry, that's Frankie. Right. Yeah, but I mean, that, I mean, it's so this is dry, yeah. this is first coat. Yep. Okay. And you can really easily see them, especially in this stain, but in all three. So yeah. and it's you can't feel them. No, no, they just, yeah, they just got to be sanded down more. Yep. So this is first coat. So what we're going to end up doing is, because this is our test piece, we're going to second coat only half of each test piece with each stain. So, so we're going to stain it this way, this way, and this way. And the reason we're doing it instead of doing it this way is we want to see the finished result on the face. So one coat, two coat. One coat, two coat. We'll do one coat. Thing, yeah two coat and then when we're done with that we've got to poly it because that's really going to be and then we're going to do this one too but, but then we're doing this plane. one just poly no nothing on it you see what ink pen i use today my uh ink saw well, i didn't see where you used it one two and three and then i marked my cans <laughs> <laughs> one two and three so we know which ones we're, we're using otherwise I'd have, i'm sure i would have made a mistake or used the wrong one so okay all right makes sense
this is our sample piece with one and two coats of three different stains. Next, we'll remove the tape and apply our clear poly coat over the top of it and see how the final product looks and know which one we want for our main countertop. Alright guys, coming up next, things go from bad to worse to terrible. And that's coming up right down the pipeline, so make sure you guys stick around to see exactly what I'm talking about, because stuff gets really interesting really fast. I guess that's one way of putting it.